What is a relay? A relay is basically a device that allows one circuit to control another circuit. That's basically it. A 90-340 relay, a fan board relay, something you might find in an air handler on an older air conditioning system. Rib relays, I have a video on this, so you can watch that if you'd like. The point is we have different kinds of relays that allow us a little versatility on controlling circuits. I have a power switch, I have a transformer, I have a relay, I have two contactors here, and I have a third contactor here that I'm using as a switch. I'm just pushing the plunger in and out to turn it on and off. This plunger here, this switch, is controlling power to the coil in this relay. I'm going to turn the power on. Let's watch these plungers. Now you can see the one on the right pulled in. So I don't have the switch on to the coil right now in the relay. So I'm going to start pushing in the plunger on and off to power that coil on and off and let's watch the plungers on the contactors. The reason why the plungers are alternating back and forth is because I have them hooked up to the relay. One is hooked up to normally open, the other normally closed. And this is how a relay works. So let's begin by looking at a schematic here of what it looks like inside the relay itself. This helps uh, conceptualize it pretty easily. Um, so you have all these black rectangles here. These are terminals you would actually hook wires up. So you have them numbered. You have one and two, uh, three, four, five, six, and then you have terminals here that run through a coil. So basically how this works is uh, you have what's called normally open and normally closed contacts. Now you can see in this image here, we are in a normally closed position. All right, so this is the position that the relays, uh, the switches inside the relays are in when it comes out of the box. You don't have to add power to it. You don't have to do anything. The springs inside there hold these switches in these positions. All right, so, if you have a wire hooked up to this number one terminal and there's any power on it, it will continue on off of that number two terminal and go ahead and power whatever device you have on it. Um, if you have another wire coming off this number three terminal to another device, obviously that's not going to get powered because our switch is between the one and two, which is normally closed. Now you also have normally open positions, and as you might guess, these terminals between one and three here is open right now. So normally in a resting state right out of the box, that's the terminals that are going to be open. So if we were to take a multimeter and check for continuity between one and three, we would get nothing. If we checked again between one and two, we would have continuity because that switch is normally closed. Now here's what happens when a relay, when the coil is powered. When you have have a 24 volt signal uh, coming in on this relay and going out this would be your common 24 coming in right so when this coil gets powered what it does is it creates a magnetic field and I know that's awful and this is getting really messy so let me clean this up all right so basically when this coil gets powered here, it creates a magnetic field that changes these switches. So it goes from normally closed here to a normally open position. And so what happens is, is these terminals, these number two terminal here, this number five terminal here, it loses power when this coil gets activated because these switches have moved now. So now you have power going from one to three. Um, here you got it from going to four to six and two and five terminals are completely cut out. So in the video where I showed you the contactors alternating, what was happening was is one was powered through a normally closed position. The other was powered through a normally open position. So regardless of which position, uh, whether the coil was getting energized or not, there was always at least one circuit being closed. Now in that demonstration, I could have had both power on at the same time. I could have had both plungers shut off at the same time. Uh, it, it's versatile. Now here's a diagram of a fan relay board. So this is your fan relay board right here. And right here is our relay. And you can see we have a normally open, a normally closed here, and a common terminal. So this relay is actually a little more simple than the relay we began the video with. In this particular relay, the coil that is in the relay is actually powered through this G terminal here. Now this is a low voltage uh, control that comes from the thermostat. And whenever the thermostat calls for heating or cooling, and this G terminal is going to power the coil. So just like in our 
previous example, these switches here, this one's the normally closed, the equal sign with the line through it, that means normally closed on schematics. Uh, you have the normally open switch here. All right, so this is the, these are the positions of the switches in its resting state, like right out of the box. When this G terminal gets powered, these are going to be reversed. So this is gonna become closed um, and this switch is going to become open. This is basically controlling the power to your blower motor down here. So we have the power coming in from the electrical panel to the transformer. One of these legs are going right down to the blower motor itself directly. The other leg is being run through this relay here and it goes to the normally open position. When, this, when the thermostat calls for the system to turn on, it powers this G terminal, which powers the coil. These switches reverse and now are normally open closed and it goes on from the comm terminal to the blower motor to complete both legs. 240 volts turns our blower motor on. Now what I can do is I can take the relay that we began the video with and actually replace this entire board right here with it. So basically all I have to do is find a way to get 24 volts off of the transformer up to the thermostat. When the thermostat calls, I need that 24 volts to come back down that green wire. And instead of going to the G terminal on my board, it would go straight to the terminal that powers the coil on the 9340 relay. So um, once the, the coil gets powered, I need to get back to the transformer as well. So the other terminal on the other side of that coil on the relay would come back on the common um, back to our transformer and that would complete the low voltage circuit that would turn the coil in the relay on and off based on the thermostat and now we have to control the power leg that goes to the blower motor I would take this power leg that's going to this particular relay here on the normally open and I would put that on say terminal 1 on the 9340 relay now the normally open position on these relays is terminal number three, right? So my comm would be terminal number three and off of that terminal, it would go to the blower motor. We're using the, the same concept of a relay. It's just a different type of relay, but it's doing the same thing. Now I could do the same thing with a rib relay. It's just one circuit controlling another. Um, I'm not gonna get into details of that, but if you guys wanna know more about fan relay boards or rib relays, I do have videos that go deep into the weeds about how these things work. I'll link them in the description below. But whenever you're substituting one way relay for another, like if you're in a pinch or something, um, you do wanna pay attention to voltage and amperage ratings on these things. They do have ratings, then you obviously, you wanna try to match them up. You don't want a relay that's too big or too small for certain applications. So it is something you wanna pay attention to. So let's, uh, let's wrap up this video by talking about diagnosing these relays. There's a lot of questions out there and people always asking about how many ohms they should be reading on these relays when they test them with a multimeter. Now this is gonna be very manufacturer specific. Spe but <laughs> It's going to be very specific to manufacturers, so it's it's really going to be a value you have to look up based on the relay that you have. But generally speaking, you have to know the difference between a coil and a contact. So our coil is the winding that um, you will find inside these relays. Sometimes you can see them, sometimes you can't. But it's a winding that goes around, 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 around. So there's going to be a lot more resistance on there than say a contact, which is just both ends of the actual switch itself so the switch is just a connection between one terminal and the other and there's not a lot of resistance there so when you're taking ohm readings and you're ohming out a coil for example um, I find generally I usually find between 10 and 20 ohms so you can see here on this coil I'm reading 17.7 so that's pretty typical of a lot of relays I work with in HVAC once again it's going to be manufacturer specific so um, you do want to look these things up or at least test enough of them to get an idea of where they should be now if I were to test uh, if I were to ohm out the terminals between the contacts I'm going to get a much lower reading so you could see there that I'm reading what 0.3 so I mean Obviously, there's gonna be a lot less resistance on contacts than on coils. Now, if I were to get an OL reading like this, that means I have an infinite amount of resistance. It means there is, it would be no different than me trying to get an ohm reading between these two probes with all the air between it. I mean, that air doesn't conduct anything at all, so I'm gonna get an infinite 
resistance reading. If you find that um, normally you have like a 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 readings on contacts, and now you're starting to read four ohms, five ohms, 10 ohms, what's happening is that you're losing conductivity on those switches for some reason. It could be pitting on the switches itself. It could be rust or some other corrosion of the terminals themselves, but you're losing continuity and the electricity is not flowing as well. So you're getting a lot more resistance there. Uh, same thing with uh, coils. If your resistance starts to go really high, um, the coil is starting to break down and eventually you're not going to get a good enough magnetic field for it to actually activate the switches. Now you can have the same problem with a reading that's too low. If you're reading 5 ohms or 4 ohms on a coil, um, that coil is also showing you signs and symptoms of breaking down. You have issues there as well and it warrants replacing the relay.